VAT is a form of sales tax only. The only difference is that it is collected in stages rather than one point of the sales of goods. Tax paid by the dealer on the purchase of goods for resale during any fixed tax period. That is called as input tax. So whenever you have a discount, the VAT paid by the shopkeeper is always equal to the VAT paid by him minus the VAT paid by the customer. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to one and all. This is your Shruti ma'am lecturing in Vidyashram, the temple of excellence, Mysore. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the value added tax. So, in the previous session, we have learnt about sales tax. So, here we are going to discuss about the value added tax. So, there is nothing difference between the sales tax as well as the value added tax. They are one and the same. Here, you are going to pay the tax at different stages. Let's study in detail about the value added tax. So, value added tax is neither a new tax nor an additional tax. It is same as the sales tax. So, it is just the replacement of sales tax. But there is a small difference here. So, VAT is a form of sales tax only. The only difference is that it is collected in stages rather than one point of the sales of goods. So, when you go to any shop, you will buy an item, you will pay the tax only once. But the value added tax is such that these taxes are collected in different different areas or different different stages. That is when a dealer buys the good, he also pays the tax and when a customer buy the goods from the dealer, he'll also pay the tax. So the total tax will be paid to the government. Now in VAT, the firm seller pays the first point of the tax to the government and subsequent seller pays again the same tax that is added for the same value hence it is called as value added tax and finally the total tax at the last point will be paid by the customer. What are the advantages of these value added taxes? It reduces the scope under evaluation and it provides a broad base tax system. The VAT is paid by the shopkeeper is calculated by what percent of selling price minus shopkeeper's purchase price. So the shopkeeper purchased the same good for different amount and he has paid the tax. The selling price will be greater than what he has purchased. Again, the selling price includes the VAT that is the sale tax that is given by the customer. Hence the VAT paid by the shopkeeper is calculated by the selling price minus shopkeeper's price. Next, VAT can be calculated using the formula VAT percentage of selling price minus cost price. Now, I said VAT is a sales tax which is collected at different stages. Now, what are the stages where this type of tax is collected? The first one is called as input tax. So, input tax is nothing but the tax paid by the dealer on the purchase of goods for resale during any fixed tax period that is called as input tax. Next we have the output tax. What is this output tax? This is the tax charged by the dealers on the sales of good during any fixed period of tax period. So this charged price will be given by the customers. So input tax means the tax paid by the dealer and output tax means tax charged by the dealer. And the difference of these two will help us to calculate the net amount of value added tax. So that is the net tax we can calculate it and it is given by output tax minus input tax. So let's solve the given problems here. A shopkeeper purchase an article for rupees 7000 and sell it to a customer for 8200. If the VAT rate is 6%, find the VAT paid by the shopkeeper. So previously we have learned the formula that is VAT is calculated by VAT percent of selling price minus cost price. So here selling price represents 
the shopkeeper which has sold to the customer and cost by represent the item which has bought for the particular value. So here what percentage is given as 6%. So it is 6 over 100. Selling price is 8,200 minus cost price is 7,000. So it is 6 by 100 in 2,200. So it is 72. So rupees 72. Next one. Mr. Arya purchase an article for rupees 3,100 and sell it to Mr. Arvind for 4,250. Mr. Arvind in turn sells it to Mr. Anil for 5,000. If the VAT leavage is 10%, Find the VAT leavid on Arya and Aravind. So we know the formula that is VAT is equal to VAT percent on the selling price minus cost price. First we will calculate the VAT of Arya. So here the VAT percentage is same for both. So therefore it is 10% represented by 10 by 100. So he sells the article for 4,250 and he purchased the article for 3,100. So therefore the difference is 1,150. So we can cancel here. So therefore the value added tax paid by Arya is rupees 150. Next he sold it for Mr. Arvind. So therefore if we calculate the VAT of Aravind, so the same formula we are using here, VAT percentage SP minus CP. So the VAT percentage is same, that is 10 by 100. So selling price is, he sold it for the Mr. Anil for rupees 5000 and he has bought the article for 4250. So therefore it is 10 over 100 into 750. So 0, 0 get cancelled. 10, 10 get cancelled. So this is rupees 75. So this is the VAT lived on Arya as well as Aravind. Next question. A shopkeeper purchase an item of rupees 100 at 8% VAT and sell it at rupees 120 to the customer and the customer also paid 8% VAT to the shopkeeper. How much amount did the shopkeeper deposit it to the government as VAT? So here we have a shopkeeper as well as the customer. So the cost price the shopkeeper has taken for rupees 100 the cost price where customer has taken is rupees 120 because shopkeeper has sold it to 120. Now VAT percentage is given that is 8%. So therefore here 8% of 100 means 8 by 100 into 100. So therefore here it is rupees 8. And here customer is 8% of 120. So when you calculate this it is equal to 9.60. Now the total VAT. Here it is rupees 8 only because he has paid already rupees 8 tax and customers is we have to subtract it with rupees 8. So therefore it is equal to 1.60 rupees. So therefore total VAT paid to the government is 8 plus 1.60 which is equal to 9.60. So because when a shopkeeper will purchase any article, he will include the tax on the selling price and he will sell to the customer. So he will get back his tax whatever he has given to the government. So he will save his money and the rest of the tax he will give it to the government. So therefore. At first, he has already paid rupees 8 for the government and the second time he will recover the 8 and 
1.60 remaining. So, the remaining tax will be added here. So, the total tax he has paid to the government is rupees 1.60. Next question. A shopkeeper purchased an electric iron of rupees 1000 at 8% VAT from the wholesaler and sell it to the customer of rupees 1400 at 8% VAT. Find amount paid by the customer, the VAT to be paid by the shopkeeper. So here, the shopkeeper purchased an electric iron for rupees 1000. So therefore, here the cost price is rupees 1000. And the selling price is rupees 1400. And VAT percentage is given, that is 8%. Now first, we need to calculate VAT. So therefore, VAT is equal to VAT percent selling price minus cost price. So VAT percentage is 8%, 8 by 100, selling price is 1400 minus 1000. So 8 by 100 into 400. So therefore, it is equal to rupees 32. So this is the VAT paid by the customer. So here first we need to calculate the amount paid by the customer. So therefore amount is equal to, so the 1400 plus 8% 8 of 1400. So that is equal to 1400 plus 8 by 100 into 1400. So when it cancels 1400, plus 112 that is equal to 1512 in terms of rupees and question b is the vat to be paid by the shopkeeper so the vat what you have calculated is nothing but the vat to be paid by the shopkeeper so therefore 32 rupees 32 is the vat paid by the shopkeeper next question a shopkeeper bought a TV at a discount of 30% of the leased price of 24,000. The shopkeeper offer a discount of 10% of the leased price to the customer. If the VAT is 10%, find the amount paid by the customer. Second one, the VAT to be paid by the shopkeeper. So here, the selling price of the shopkeeper is so 30 percent has taken discount means it is 70 percent of 24,000 so that is 70 by 100 into 24,000 so when you multiply so it is rupees 16,800 so now Again, the selling price to the customer, he has given 10% discount. That means selling price to the customer is nothing but 90% of 24,000. So that is 90 by 100 into 24,000. So again, when you multiply, so that is 21,600. So, this is what the selling price he has given to the customer with 10% discount. Now, we need to calculate amount paid by the customer. So, first one is amount is the selling price is 21,600 and we have a VAT of 10%. So, therefore, it is 10% of 21,600. So, which is 21,600 plus 10 by 100 into 21,600. So, 21,600 plus 2,160. So, that is equal to 23,760. So, this is the amount paid by the customer. Next, we have to calculate the VAT to be paid by the shopkeeper. So, here... VAT is equal to VAT percentage. Here it is 23,760 minus. He has got it for 16,800. 16,800. So this is VAT percentage is 10%. 10% of 
10 divided by 100. So when you subtract 4,800, so the, it is rupees 480. So this is the VAT paid by the shopkeeper. So the next question is, Mohan, a owner of a departmental store, purchased an article of rupees 1500 at 4% VAT and sell it at rupees 1700 to the customer at 4% VAT. How much amount did the shopkeeper deposit it to the government as VAT? So let us see here we have Mohan and customer here. So Mohan bought it for 1500 and sell it or customer bought it for 1700. Now let us apply VAT of 4% for both. So here 4 by 100 in 2500 you will get the value as 60. So here 4 by 100 in 2700 you will get the value as 78. So here actually he recovers his money that is 78 minus 60 is equal to 18. So only rupees 18 he'll pay to the government. So therefore net tax or net value added tax. So at first he has already paid 16. Second time he will pay 18. So total it is rupees 78. Next question. Sanju, a owner of a jewellery shop, purchased a earring of rupees 2000 at 12% VAT and sells it at rupees 2300 to the customer Radhika. If Radhika also pays 12% VAT to the shopkeeper, how much did the shopkeeper deposit to the government as VAT? So we will take here Sanju and Radhika. So Sanju will shop at 2000 rupees and Radhika will get it for 2300. Now the VAT percent is 12 percent which is taken as VAT. So therefore 12 percent of 2000 so which is 240 and here 12 percent of 2300 so that is equal to 276. Now here he will recover back his money. So therefore we can write this as 276 minus 240 which is equal to 36. So therefore net VAT can be taken as 240 plus 36 which is equal to rupees 276. So this is the amount he will pay for the government. So the next question is, a shopkeeper buys a mobile set at a discount rate of 20% from the wholesaler. The printed price of the mobile set being rupees 1600 and the rate of sales tax is 6%. The shopkeeper sells it to the buyer at the printed price and the charges tax at the same rate. Find the price at which the mobile set can be bought from wholesaler. Second, the VAT paid by the shopkeeper. So here we need to calculate the first selling price he has given to the customer. So therefore what we can calculate here, selling price is actually 80% of, he has got 20% of discount. So it is 80% of 1600. So therefore it is 80 by 100 into 1600. So which is equal to on cancelling, you will get the value as 1280. So the amount is what actually he paid is 1280 plus here the VAT percent of 1280. So 1280 plus 6 by 100 in 2280. So it is 1280 plus 76.8. So the value will be equal to 1356.80. So this is the total amount or the total mobile set that cost it. Now here we have to calculate the total VAT paid by the shopkeeper. So therefore here the shopkeeper and the customer. So he has bought it for 1600 
and the customer has bought it for 1280. So when you apply the VAT of 6% here, here it is 6 by 100 into 1600 and here 6 by 100 into 1280. So this will be equal to 96 and this is already we have calculated it is equal to 76.8. So therefore VAT paid by shopkeeper can be taken as 96 minus 76.8 which is equal to rupees 19.20. So whenever you have a discount the VAT paid by the shopkeeper is always equal to the VAT paid by him minus the VAT paid by the customer. So in today's session we have solved the problems on value added tax. This completes the chapter sales tax and value added tax. We'll meet you in the next session. Until then keep watching, keep learning, keep exploring. Thank you.